Welcome back to Relative Conscious. My name is Thomas Brown. Irvin Bryant. Shout out to DJ for making our beat. At DW made that on social media. Follow the social media. At Kind of Book on Instagram and Twitter, Relatively Conscious, everywhere else. Like, subscribe, share, follow, retweet, and comment. Let us know. Uh, what do you think about the January 6th trials uh, hearings? And um, what is the outcome? You know, we've done all this learning about who is uh, crazy and who's doing what and who plotted to overthrow the government, et cetera, et cetera. But what does it all mean at the end of the day? Gotcha. So I'm going to order real quick. the two extremes. Okay? The left is most extreme and the right is most extreme. The left is most extreme. There is by far, I think, in my 1L legal opinion, uh, there there's enough evidence to charge Donald Trump with trying to defraud the American government. Um, the main thing you have to prove is intent. They intently try to defraud the American government. I think that one hearing that she gave last week uh, testified to that, that he be- that he really knew what he was doing was wrong. That way there he have really- been multiple testimonies about that. Of yeah, I think most contact who he said, who he said uh, oh, you know, find the votes, find the votes, find the votes. Yeah. yeah. But see, they, that, that, that one I can spend to say he said to find the votes because he really thought that there are votes to be found because he really thought that oh, uh, yeah. election tampering. Yeah, I think this really tells us that he knew he had lost. The standard is known or should have known that he was defrauding the American government. Known is always hard to prove. Should have known is easier. If you have enough people telling you that you lost, then yeah. you should have known. You know, if the only person telling you that you won is our drunk Rudy Giuliani, <laughs> then maybe you, you lost. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and so there's enough, I there's enough, you know, uh, there's enough fire here to mm-hmm. charge him with defrauding my, the United States government. The most extreme outcome is that the Department of Justice decides to charge, which I think can lead to disastrous results, right? Um, especially if he wins the case. So the extreme is that they charge him, and either he wins the case or the cases get bogged down for like 10 to 15 years. And he makes it, he makes it a rallying cry, basically. Um, it becomes his... It becomes this free Huey campaign, basically. Uh, they put on T-shirts, you know. They they doing chants and rallies about it. You know, it's it's it just becomes a whole thing, basically. Free Trump. And what's crazy is, will he survive another fifteen years? Man probably is old. Not. Yeah. So probably not. But that means the case probably just ends. And we never, you know, either we hear a ruling in court where he wins, or we hear a ruling, or we never get a ruling in court because he dies. Before and that'd be wor- and that'd be worse. I think yeah. <laughs> if he if he died before there was result. Yeah, that's what I think is one of the most extreme outcomes. Yes, the other extreme outcome, and this is this is sort of the same vein. The, the the Department of Justice doesn't try him, but because they don't try him, it emboldens his party. It emboldens election deniers, basically. Um, the the public forgets. They stop caring, basically. Um, they hear this testimony. Then October rolls around, gas prices are still high. And they're like, who was testifying? I, I, I don't care anymore. You know, um, bread is still high. Bread is so expensive, bro. I, like, it's ridiculous. <laughs> uh, bread, eggs, anything you need is essential. That's how, yeah, that, those are the markers. Yeah. Um, it was still that, it was that's still expensive in October. And you start talking talk, talk to somebody about like, we need to try Donald Trump. I think the public not going to care at that point, you know. So the, the Department of Justice doesn't move fast enough and people stop caring. Then the election deniers, um, the big lie believers, as they call them, who are running for office right now, win in November. And then when he runs in 2024, they help him overturn an election, basically. Either he wins outright because the public doesn't care anymore or he loses but it's close enough in a couple of states, Pennsylvania, Arizona, uh, Michigan, places where these election deniers are running, and he wins because uh, they want to overturn the election. Basically. And hearing only does harm because there's no end result from it. There's no consequences from it, right? Mm-hmm. So the public heard what I did. They heard about me grabbing the steering wheel. They heard that I didn't care, and they didn't do anything about it. Well, then I might as well just go harder. You know why? Yeah, really. There's, if there's yeah. actually no consequence. Yeah. Well, there's only there's no consequence because he's the president and he's somewhat slick. Yeah. So, so I mean, if, if he would were to win again, 
he could go crazy like that. Yeah. Those are pretty solid uh, worst case scenario predictions. Yeah. And I mean, he yeah, has pretty, it's pretty much it. I mean, we're pretty much teetering on the edge of that. You know, either the man gets locked up forever and, you know, so long, farewell. Which could still, like, if he's convicted, he, it could still be a free Donald movement, which would be Insane. a whole different can of worms. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I think it's, they're kind of worst case scenarios either way <laughs> in the extreme. Because, uh, you know, even Donald Trump's, like, you know, 2020, the last year of his uh, presidency, was horrendous in every way imaginable. And, I mean, unwavering support for this man in his uh, MAGA movement, quote unquote. I hate saying that out loud. But, uh, <laughs> So, yeah, I mean, if he's locked up and convicted or the trial takes forever or if he's not, you know, if nothing happens, I kind of just see this movement still being a problem. If he's not convicted or if it takes forever, you know, whatever, if, if there is no uh, consequence for the man, I do understand what you're saying, where his uh, big lie peddlers will be more successful in November. That makes yeah. sense because uh, there'll be some kind of vindication and they'll be able to, like, repeat you know, whatever, the, they'll be playing the clip, whatever the judge says, <laughs> yeah, over and over again in their campaign ads, be like, yes, I was correct. You, do you see what I'm saying? But, um, boy, it's a, it's a new world, the 20s. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, but that, those are extremes. This is what I think, um, there's a third option, nothing happens. I mean, there's nothing to say about that. Nothing happens. We just keep going with life as is. Uh, Republicans probably win the House Maybe the Senate stays 50-50 or 49-50, whatever. And we just get a gridlock Congress. They both run in 2024. And I don't know what happens, basically. You know. It um, sounds almost like um the Mueller report. Yeah. Basically. Which is stunning. Something that my YouTube sometimes auto plays while I'm asleep and I wake up and I'm like, oh yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> the Mueller report. And yeah. I really sat there and told the whole story and it uh, didn't matter, it, which is crazy er, because before it came out, everybody was super like on pins and needles waiting for it on the edge of their seat. We were and in we D- I'm sorry, we were in DC. People were like, every day they were like, it's, it could happen soon because they want to yeah. get out before midterms. They, did, they decided not to do that, he decided yeah. to wait until afterwards. Um, I think it was almost a whole was it a whole calendar year? Yeah, 2019, I was working in Al Green's office when um, they finally had testimony about it. Yeah, so it was almost a whole calendar year. But there was pins and needles waiting a year before that for it to drop. You know, we were waiting to hear about it. Um, and it confirmed but, most of what we thought. Yeah. It's just an, it's just not conclusive. You know, it's not, like we said, it's not that's something you can put the man in jail over. And um, so we all just moved on. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Democrats were just as inflamed and upset about his presence as before. But then we just, you know, got new, new Trump scandal to worry about. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my last option, which I think I probably would put money on this, um, is like Hillary's emails. This becomes like Hillary's emails for him, basically. Um, now, of course, I don't know if people are going to hear me say that and be like, well, her emails weren't uh, him her committing a crime against, no. against the U.S. government, right? But I'm talking about in the way that her emails played into her candidacy. It dogged her the entire time. It was always something you could bring up. It was always something that um, weighed her down uh, the entire time. So, and, you know, they talk about but her emails, you know. Um, I would love for that to be true. Yeah, but let me, let me give the whole picture, though. Uh, okay. it, it weighs him down in a way that those who support him, like those who supported Hillary, it's they don't care about it. They don't hear it. It doesn't matter to them. But to the American public, it's like, yeah, you know, I, I, I would like Donald Trump because gas is cheaper. But I don't know. I'm kind of tired of that guy. I'm tired of seeing him. He is exhausting. There's always a scandal. There's always something I got to deal with. He wasn't going to talk about it at work. I just don't want to deal with it anymore. And he loses just because people are basically tired of him. And it's a but his scandals type of situation where maybe he would have won, but the American public got so tired of dealing with him that every time he was on TV, SNL had to talk about it. My coworkers want to have a discussion about it. You know, that that's pretty good because, uh, yeah, he's not president and he's, you know, with this January 6th uh, hearing, he's back in the news. His name is back in the mix, even though the man like he's kind of I mean, he he does, which is kind of crazy. I don't know. I mean, he still makes appearances publicly. If I were him, I'd disappear for a minute. But yeah, <laughs> uh, 
um, he's still like not making legit news. You know, he doesn't actually affect my life, even though he yeah. appears in public. Um, but his name is still on C-SPAN now, which is pretty crazy. Mm. Uh, so, I mean, you know, I've been tired of him. I was tired of him in 2012. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, I see what you're saying. It becomes, you know, I, I think if I think the like Hillary situation is probable because Trump is 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 grading. Like he like he made the workplace annoying. Like you don't, no one wanted to talk about politics anymore. They were tired of dealing with him. Michael Che had a great joke about this when he was like, I can't wait till the president is a boring white guy. When I had to say, Do you remember you heard the president say yesterday? And I could nope. be like, no. Nope. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that's what I think people one thing about Joe Biden that I think people uh like about or we him. get all hate on him together. Yeah. But everybody not, mad at Joe. <laughs> but also like everybody's everybody, mad at Joe together. But I don't like hanging on his every word. No, 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 no. Watching his Twitter feed. And then like, you know, um, he's not always doing something crazy to make make ABC or, or... <laughs> cut into my TV show. Like there was like several times I was watching the NFL football game and NFL and when M- NBC would cut into the football game for something Donald Trump did. Yeah, I this, news. yeah, I got to deal with the stupidness. I can't watch the Packers. Yeah, that has like a serious effect on people, basically. Uh, I think they prefer a boring white guy I don't like over someone who's going to cause issues, basically, right. at the workplace. And, 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 and again, nobody has that uh, undying loyalty to uh, Biden. <laughs> yeah. So when he falls off a bike, we're all going to laugh, as yeah. opposed to when Trump does something stupid and his uh, followers uh, try to act like it wasn't stupid, like Kofefe. Like we all yeah. should have laughed at that. That was hilarious. Yeah, but you know, it's um, a- which is why I think when this and this when I say it comes like Hillary, well, I think this this leaves Atlanta open for Ron DeSantis because if I'm in a primary and I'm a Republican voter and I'm like I could have Trump without the news, the breaking news, why well, don't just do that? I think I think you will, but you know that's a different story. Yeah, but like if I was, I mean, if I was a Republican voter, that's what I would do. I can get all the, I can get the banned CRT. I can get the hate for abortions. I can get the remaining Mexico policy. I can get all of that. But I don't got to deal with the right, the left losing their mind every time he says something when he doesn't tweet. And yeah. he doesn't, he's not like, he doesn't bash women like that. You know, mm-hmm. uh, he's not saying, there's no grab him by the, you know, video like that. And so all it is is just it's just Ron DeSantos, it's just him doing his craziness, but it's not at that level, you know. Um, and he's not old. It's like I have all that and I deal with that. That's why people were. That's why I think if there was any alternative to Hillary, like in two thousand eight, I think they would have chose it. People would have chose the alternative to Hillary than Hillary. So like until they chose Obama, they were going to choose John Edwards. So all that stuff came out. <laughs> um, two thousand sixteen, I think people chose Sanders. And we're looking at Sanders because they're like, I'm kind of tired of talking about her emails all the time. Can I get, is there something else on the menu? You know, um, but anyway, that's my uh, 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 my uh, thought process on this. We'll see what happens in the future. Um, I really don't know what the Department of Justice is going to do. I think Garland is more conservative. And I think Garland will only uh, move if he had all his ducks in a row and was sure of a conviction. And I don't think he's, I don't think, I don't think he'll ever be sure of a conviction. So I don't think he'll ever try to try him, basically, you know, I think, um, but I do think the Democrats are being smart by keeping us in the news enough that people, you know, still know about it. It's not in their face, you know, they still know about it, but Democrats won't have any real chance. They got to deal with uh, gas prices. They got to deal with inflation. Uh, That's what people really care about. Um, Because if Trump says he has an answer to that, people may be willing to deal with everything else to get some relief at the pump, you know. All right, my name is Thomas Brown. Irvin Bryant. Peace. Do it to him, baby.